Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome wherever you are as we come together to pray this morning on this 16th Sunday of the year. And I invite you to join in the responses and the prayers as best you can wherever you find yourself. In today's psalm, we respond, the Lord is good and forgiving. And so for the times, perhaps, we notice we need that goodness and that forgiveness of the Lord in our own lives. Let's pause now and ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let's praise God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise Amen. you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For You alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, whose care is for all men, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is a source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when men doubt the completeness of your power, and rebuke any insolence amongst those who know it. You who are sovereign in strength judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us. For you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works, you have taught your people that the righteous man must be kind, and you have filled your sons with good hope, because you give repentance for sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to my voice in supplication. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come. They will bow down before you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You who alone are God. O God, you are good and forgiving. But you, O God, are compassionate and gracious. 
Slow to anger, O Lord, abundant in mercy and fidelity, turn and take pity on me. O Lord, Lord, you you are are good good and and forgiving. forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. To you. At that time, Jesus put another parable before the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then has it weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable he put before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it was grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. And he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened. All this Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us. The parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, and the field is the world. And the good seed means the sons of the kingdom, the weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, 
and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. How does God see the world? This 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel begins to help us articulate an answer to that question. And the more that I reflected on this chapter, the more I noticed how it seems to capture the vision that God has for the world. Take note of how many themes occur in these verses that we have read. The reign of God, good and bad, inclusive, exclusive, growth, the identity of Jesus as we hear the word master being said. I'd like to offer three reflections which are unrelated but all say something, it seems to me, about how God sees the world. They are by no means an all-encompassing exegesis of this very rich text. The first thing that strikes me is that in God's vision and in God's worldview, ambiguity exists. We have weeds and wheat. And isn't this so much part of our own lives as well? Weeds and wheat. Think about it. Strength and weakness. Good and bad. Struggle and joy. Loss and gain. Old and new. Missed opportunities, yet new horizons and opportunities. Life and death. We see these opposites at play in our own lives all the time. And sometimes we spend a lot of energy trying to overcome the weakness and therefore not seeing the strength, fighting the bad and therefore not enjoying the good, counting the losses and not seeing the gain. We are taught from young to overcome the weeds in our lives. And we can spend so much time and energy trying to root out the weeds in our lives that we damage the wheat. Or at worst, we don't even notice the wheat. Jesus, it seems to me, suggests that these opposites can grow together. In fact, that they should grow together. He instructs the people in the gospel, those slaves, not to go and uproot the weeds. He doesn't deny that the weeds are there, but they are not his focus. You see, God sees things very differently to us. And so the invitation to us may be to focus on the wheat in ourselves and in others. In God's vision, the wheat will outgrow the weeds. And so we are invited to accept God's graciousness and God's patience with ourselves and others. Notice too that it is God that does the weeding. It is God who decides when it will happen. This can be very unnerving and yet also very reassuring because it reveals a God to us who can cope better, perhaps, with ambiguity than we can ourselves. The second reflection I want to offer is 
the best way to image God. It's fascinating how in that gospel, Jesus blends male and female images of God together. You see, friends, no human image is adequate to capture God or to express who God is. If we think we know who God is and hold on to a certain image, we can be sure that that image is a false image. All our language is metaphorical and all our language is limited. But language is also important. We cannot deny that. It is how we convey meaning and how we understand things. And therefore, what we say about God reflects what we believe about God. If we use only one image for God, we limit God. And therein lies the second invitation to us, to interrogate our own image of God. We could ask, how does my image of God impact the way I speak and the way that I behave? May I need to expand my image of God as Jesus does in the gospel, so that it is not narrow or limited, so that I can grow in my understanding of who God is. And the third thing I want to reflect on is just simply to notice the power in smallness. There is something hidden, there is something imperceptible, silent in these parables. The growth of weeds and wheat, this happens silently and quietly. We don't see it. The small seed that becomes the big tree. The yeast mixed with flour that causes it to rise. You see, so often we look for that which is big and grandiose, that which is noticeable. And Jesus suggests that the reign of God is brought about by small and hidden and quiet efforts. There is something in this 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel about the great subversive potential of that which is little, that which is small, the small or smallest of all seeds. You know, faced with so many difficulties and problems, be that failing economies on a global scale, a frightful pandemic, racism or gender-based violence, the sufferings of migrants and refugees, or in our own church even, clerical sex abuse, the vacuum of leadership which we experience all over the world, we might be tempted to think that our own efforts count for nothing and make no difference. And therein lies the third invitation, to recognize that our modest efforts, that our small acts of forgiveness and charity and generosity and love, our small stance for justice, our voice challenging racism or gender-based violence may seem insignificant, but slowly, like the seed we hear about in the gospel, usher in the birth of the reign of God. God's reign is not one of might and power, but rather a silent transformation that takes place. In our daily small and sometimes maybe even very small and oft silent ways, we can choose to live and act in a way that God sees, God's way, and that, therefore, the reign of God can triumph. And so I invite you to spend some time with this gospel passage this week. Read it again and again 
and reflect upon it. Ask yourself the ways that this passage helps you to understand and perhaps gain more depth as to seeing how God sees. Maybe the invitation in this whole text is simply, can you glimpse God's vision for yourself and for the world? So let's join together now in professing our faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So, friends, we have heard... God's word. And now we're invited to respond to that word by bringing our own lives and our petitions before him. And so we do so as we make our prayers together. For the church, that we may be exemplary in seeing as God sees, not as we are tempted to, and in so doing care for all and treat all justly, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of countries, the church and households, that all leaders may be good sowers and choose to sow good seeds, and in so doing, lead truthfully and justly, that leaders too may learn to be patient with others and recognize the potential, the wheat in every person. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the poor and marginalized, that through works of generosity and the kindness of organizations and individuals, they may see themselves as loved and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, that God may restore health to all those who are sick with any ailments or diseases. We pray especially for those who are suffering directly and indirectly with COVID-19. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the researchers, doctors, and nurses, that God may help those seeking a cure for the diseases that affect humanity and give courage, strength, and protection to doctors and nurses who are on the forefront of caring for and serving all who are sick. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, that we may learn to see as God sees, that we would recognize God's image in every person and know that we all carry the image of God in our very selves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, our God, these are our prayers. We make them in faith through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice as your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Uti, our bishop, Duncan, his assistant, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. That God's vision would be our vision. Let's pray as the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's spend a moment now praying for peace. Peace in our own hearts, in our families, in our community and society, and across the world. We pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters and my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you for joining us in prayer today, and I hope that you would have a very restful day and that the week ahead will be one in which you can really begin to glimpse the world as God sees. And so the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve God by loving and serving one another. Let's be to